Yeah. We're going to start this one a little different. I just found this song after like five years of not listening to it. It's like 11 years old. Yeah. It's kind of helped me get through some interesting moments. Dom Kennedy, me again. Hopefully it doesn't get copyrighted. It's on a mixtape. Just listen up. At seven sharp, I watch mom heat our dinners up. I used to wonder why she never eat dinner much. I hit my first Those dice game, game on some beginner's, beginner's luck. luck. And they good, good all week. week. Meet, Meet the, the winners, winners chump. chump. We was wild in those days. We don't right, sing as much. Coming up. Got a lot more going, but we don't grin as much. It's still, still cops, cops and robbers, robbers but we don't pretend, pretend as much. much. All, all that stimulus money, money and they don't send us much. Looking for a break and we don't really bend as much. Homes is going up and they don't really lend as much. It's still red or blue and they don't really blend it much. Police try and break it up, but they don't end it much. Tonight a young man was shot is what it ended up. So don't tell me swine flu gonna be the end of us. I believe God can see his voice send us up. And I don't know about you, but he made men of us. This is all on me. From the west side, L-O-V-E. You might never see nothing like me, nah. You might never hear nothing like me, me again, nah. I'm, I'm back, back looking, looking like me again. Tell them niggas it's <laughs> me again. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's me again. again. Second verse goes even harder. It's me again. I used to pray my dad's mom would always stay around. It's been a long 10 years since we laid it down. Sometimes I pass by a building on my way through town. If I told her I was rapping, it would have made her smile. To see me at 25, it would have made her wow. Wish I could write the songs then, I could have made her now. I, I once, once told my pops that, that I hated school. school. He, he gave me 60, 60 bucks a week and I made it through. I knew the books was half truth, truth, but I played it cool. Then I planned the future, then I made it move. Now the world goes anywhere I tell it to. I'm just an example. That's what I'm telling you. From the west side where love's what I'm mailing you. Politicians should be assisting, not failing you. So you could go around trying to tell the truth. Be careful who you tell it to. Yeah. This is all on me. From the west side, L-O-V-E. You might never see nothing like me. Nah. You might never hear nothing like me again. I'm back looking like me again. Tell them it's me again. It's me again. All right, now, yeah. outro. It's me Listen. Again. My mind is the strongest muscle in my body. I can make anything happen. Just got to add a little love, a little dedication. Give it some time and watch it grow. Hard work, work will take, take you anywhere, anywhere you want to go. go. If, if you don't, don't believe nothing, nothing else, you could bet, bet on that. that. Keep your head up high and never look back. Know it's only one person that can stop you from getting what you want. And that's, that's yourself. yourself. Gotta push, push yourself, yourself to be, be the best, best and don't, don't worry about, about nobody else. else. Remember, Remember theirs ain't, ain't got, got nothing, nothing to do with yours. yours. You hear me? You hear me? Woohoo! Boy! Yeah, man, I had to I had to bring that one back. It's also not on Spotify, so I wanted to put it in the beginning so I can listen to that song whenever I want probably can't monetize this one on youtube i just hope they don't take it off dom appreciate that song i don't know him or anything but he seems like a cool motherfucker man that song though is one of those songs i don't know about you but i will listen to a song on repeat like over and over and over and over again if it's just in the right vibe and the right time and the right place and all those kind of things and this song pretty much any time it comes back into my life it's like all I listen to for one day straight and I'm I'm getting kind of weird with music in general because I just view music as like a you know it is a vibration you know a series of frequencies and vibrations and so it can affect you positively or negatively and so I used to always be about like trying to find new music and listening to new music and all that stuff but now man I have one playlist called the vibes and I'll occasionally add to it it's probably got like 50 songs on it now and from anything from like rap to acoustic to 
you know, just whatever gives me that frequency, those vibes. And that's all I listen to if I'm listening to music, whether I'm working out, whether I'm chilling, you know, whether a girl's over, whether whatever it's, it's, that is the playlist because I know for a fact that it's going to like positively influence me and give me good vibrations. So yeah, I just, I had to share that one, that, that one, like I said, this was, maybe I didn't say it, March 26, 2010 is when this video was on YouTube. It's off a mixtape from when I was in high school. And some of the shit he says in it, politicians should be assisting, not failing you. So you could go around trying to tell the truth. Be careful who you tell it to. You know, I mean, tonight a young man was shot is what it ended up. So don't tell me swamp flu going to be the end of us. I believe God can see us before he send us up. And I don't know about you, but he made men of us. I mean, like 10, 11 years in the past relates perfectly to right now. And so, I don't know. Like I said, I, I heard that song this week. I just moved to Finland a couple weeks ago. We're going to do the Finnish kind of first impressions. I'm enjoying life a lot out here. We're going to get into that. But it was just like a good reminder to hear that song again and I don't know what brought it up or what made me remember it but I'm happy it did and I just figured I could pass it along to somebody else because whether it's the lyrics or that little outro kind of motivational speech he gives some real shit man and I relate an incredible amount to it so like I said, just wanted to share it, and yeah, let's get into this episode. You know what I mean? I don't know. I've kind of gone away from doing some of the intros, but I've also been doing guest ones. Um, yeah. So, yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to Living for a Living with your boy Joey Bradley. I'm not sure what episode number this is going to be because I have a couple guest interviews that I've done, or guest podcasts, I mean, and I don't... I don't know if I'll release this one before or after or in the middle. It's going to be 40-something. We'll put it like that. But episode one, back in Finland, I have returned. And, man, I could not be more excited and happy to be where I'm at right now. Um, as many of you know, or maybe you don't know, I don't know, I was in Finland for couple months last year 2019 was supposed to play out here and then it just ultimately didn't work out and I've kind of battled back and forth with like telling the full story and like really spilling the tea because it's a pretty good story and I mean I've I've explained it here and there but I, it's in the past man like uh, there's nothing really that can get solved from it I realized you know for a while it's like I wanted to say it to get my side out there because it was I felt like my name kind of got drugged through the mud unfairly and some negative things said about me but ultimately that shit don't matter everything everything evens out how it should and in the end karma always wins and so I don't I don't need to do any more talking about it but with that said like just being here and the first week, the first day, the first hour has just been like night and day different from the last Finnish experience. And I mean that more in like an extremely positive way towards here in Kuopio than trying to be negative towards Vasa because I really ultimately liked Vasa and yeah, but out here it's just been great, man. Um, my apartment's dope got a really good spot you know for the first time ever in Europe oh let me get that light out of the way and first time ever in Europe I have my own place I have a couch I have a kitchen table and I have a balcony um in one way or another I've like I'll either have one of those things but I won't have any of the others and so like this is almost perfect I just don't, 
my only thing. I don't have a washer in the building or in my apartment. It's in the building, so it's like a shared one with the other people that live here. Um, but hey, you can't have it all. Nothing's going to be perfect. So I do laundry once every two weeks or whenever I run out of underwear so I can share it with whoever next door, which actually I met the neighbor last last week. I forget her name, but I remember her dog's name. She has a Dalmatian named like Konko, which means king in Finnish, I think she said. And Finnish is a funny language, man. I'm going to kind of get in and get on Finland. I like Finland a lot. I think that I've been telling people, I think Finland is one of the few places where common sense is still lingering. And I'm not saying everybody has it here or what, I don't know. But it's just there is still some common sense here. Um, Like I talked about last episode, in the U.S., it's gone. West Coast, it's gone. But here, there's still some common sense. And boy, that's refreshing, man. Like, that is super refreshing. But then in the same sense, there's stuff that doesn't make sense. Um, Like, I don't mean to start with a negative, but every shower I've had in Finland, like the bathroom setup, it's just like there's not a thing on the floor to deter the water from going anywhere. So, like... The water just goes everywhere, and then you use like a squeegee to squeegee it into the uh, little sewer thingy. I don't know how you guys haven't figured that one out. But on the flip side, they have the drying rack for dishes is located right above the sink, and it's in like a cupboard format. And so you literally wash your dishes and then put it kind of in the cupboard to dry and you can put it away. So you don't have that have to have that ugly little plastic thing sitting on the side of your sink that just takes up half my counter space. So like I said, there's good and bad. You can't have it all. Um, really, my only real negative with Finland in my first week here was... I tried the pizza spot across the street from my house and I had a bad feeling about it when I walked in and like nobody was in there and it looked like it was from like 1987. Um, It was a kebab pizza place combo, which in the past in Spain, those spots are pretty legit. Um, And it was even like a, like a, kind of Turkish looking dude working there so I thought okay we're, we're all right we're, we got the right demo going and everything there got it just a cheese pizza because that's how you got to try it one bite everybody knows the rules and I didn't finish it and not to get too graphic but for the next 48 to 72 hours I had to visit the bathroom every 30 minutes minimum I was running there, and I was running in there, if you know what I'm saying. So, uh, yeah, that was interesting. I just, again, trying to look at everything positively. I got a free detox when I got out here. <laughs> but that was that was rough, I will admit that. I was waking up every couple hours while I was sleeping. I, was, I had just gotten two COVID tests, too, which is just absolute lunacy um i got one in prague before i left and i think it was just the pcr test and so they didn't really have to stick it too far up my nose you know it was just real quick just a little doot doot, and we were good and that cost me like 120 euros for that 10 seconds which is just a total utter scam and then you get to finland and finland as i noted still has some common sense and they will test everybody arriving for free because it's much cheaper to test everybody than it is just to shut the country down. Um, and so I don't know if the lady who is doing my test uh, got pleasure from nasal insertions, but boy, she was enjoying my pain. That was some torture. I was talking shit about the tests and people complaining that they really hurt 
after I got the first one because I thought like, oh, that wasn't bad, you know, because I don't even know if the lady did her job, you know. But the second one in Finland, she did her job and more. I thought she wanted a tip after I got done with her. I mean, she stuck that thing. First, she I sit down and she goes, okay, you know, uh, keep your head in a neutral position. And I go, okay, let's go. And she sticks it up and just, I mean, she's sticking it up there. And like naturally, I start to move my head back and she's like, keep your head still like mad at me and I wanted to be like lady do you know what the fuck you're doing right now like you do you know what you're telling me to do in response to what you were doing like these things don't add up and she ended up holding my head so she could jam this thing up my nose and then she like counted to five while it's scratching my brain and I've talked with a couple people that are nurses and they're like, no, I don't think it needs to be up there a second. And so that's why I say this lady, I think, was mad at me or something because she counted to five. And I mean, it comes back with, I don't know what it is. I'm not a medical professional, but like it's red when it comes back, which in my mind means there's blood or something on it. And so... Yeah, that was, I looked at the other lady who was working there and I said, okay, tell me this. How can you tell me who my great, 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 great grandfather is by spitting in a cup, you know, Ancestry.com or 23andMe, whatever the fuck it's called. Yet, to determine if I have the most contagious disease on the planet right now, you need to stick a Q-tip up and touch my brain and I know it doesn't really touch my brain but I mean it's I don't know what is like it feels like it's behind your eyeball and I mean I think that's where the nasal like thing goes you know again I'm not a doctor too much schooling for me to do that but I could feel pain like behind my eye for four days after this test. And so when I got, which I'm now thinking it was just kind of food poisoning or, you know, something like that, or a kind of a combination of moving and different diet. Plus the, the pizza was, was bad. I'm not, not going back there. If you live in Quopio, avoid Duran's pizza. Maybe the kebabs are good. I, I wanted to get a kebab, but a kebab was going to be like nine euros. Like the point of getting kebab is like, you know, you're going to shit afterwards, but it only costs three euros, you know? So it's like a, you trade off. I'm not going to pay nine euros to shit my brains out an hour later. So uh, I guess the kebab game in Finland just isn't where it's at, unfortunately, but as I said, everything else is pretty great. So if those are the couple little trade-offs that I got to have, then so be it. We'll take it. I'm on quite a tea kick these days. I haven't really been drinking coffee as much because I have like a drip coffee maker and I'm just not very good at making it. And like... I only really want one cup, but I always end up making like three and then I pour it out and it just doesn't taste exactly how I want. And so I'm on the, the green tea with some lemon and honey and I'm like finally maybe maturing and I'm able to drink tea at the proper temperature. I've, I've been the worst tea drinker my entire life where either I try and drink it when it's still boiling or then I forget about it and I drink it turns into iced tea or cold tea I guess because it's not iced and so I can never get it right in that sweet spot I'm figuring out baby yeah like right now it's fucking perfect it's delicious so it only took me like hmm I mean, I guess I wasn't drinking tea at a young age. It only took me like 20 years of my life to figure out how to drink tea. So, better late than never, huh? 
but anyway. First impressions of Finland and Finnish people. Like I said, I'm I'm a big fan. Um, the the first thing that sticks out that I like is like Finnish people are straightforward and honest. You know, like to a fault probably. And this isn't like talking shit about Finnish people at all because literally every Finnish person you talk to will admit this and I've had multiple conversations now with a lot of people so I know this is true you know and then the other funny thing that one of my buddies said was um (laughs) there's no such thing as an awkward silence in Finnish or with Finnish people because while they are straightforward a little bit in the in the very intro it can just be a little bit awkward um but it's only just that first, like, introductory. Um, like, they don't really like handshakes so much. You know, these are just, like, little observations I've realized. Um, like, when <laughs> you either, like, leave or arrive somewhere, like, no one, and maybe it's because of COVID, too, but, like, no one goes and just, like, daps people up. Like, it's just like, oh, hey, what's up? And then when people leave, whether it's practice or hanging out or whatever, like, it's just like, see ya and leave. Or maybe they won't even say bye, but there's no like, you know, all right, bro, see ya, you know, like later. And I guess, again, I've talked about it with a couple people and they said, yeah, I mean, for people that you know, you're going to see like the next day or whatever, why do you got to do that? You know, if you're going to say bye to someone that you're not going to see for a while, yeah, maybe a hug or a handshake. But otherwise, what are we fucking around with that for? And then I realized that I was I was the awkward one in my first meeting between me and my coach because like he is spent time around a lot of Americans through football. And so he knew the system of like the dap and like bro hug. But I didn't know because I just got off the plane, had like the mask on, like COVID situation. And, you know, I didn't know what to do. And normally I'm like dap, bro hug and like force it on somebody that doesn't really want it. But I kind of went in for like the weird fist bump thing and he went for it. And so it was just like funny. Now I just thought about that for the first time as I was saying that. And so, yeah, those those are some observations like when the other night when we left practice we dropped two other guys off and like the one guy we dropped off like just literally just got out of the car shut the door and left like no goodbyes to anybody and I was just like (laughs) what you know and like but it's it's cool you know I'm not I'm not mad at it at all it's just different than what I'm used to and you know a lot of the like dapping up in the U.S. and other countries is kind of phony you know when you think about it and that's what I've heard over the you know last few years of being in Europe with people with Europeans who have spent a lot amount a lot a large amount of time in the states whether it be exchange programs or going to college there or living there it was like Americans are nice but it's kind of phony because they're like nice and like welcoming and all those things but it doesn't really extend past that where like they won't do anything for you if you're really in need of something whereas you know whether it be Polish or Finnish or Czech or whatever, like maybe a little less friendly and smiley and, hey, how are you doing and that kind of stuff. But if you like were really in a jam, you could call someone and like they would come through in the clutch with you, you know. And so that's kind of nice. I think think that's better, to be honest. I mean, I don't know if it's better, but it's different. And I, I, again, I appreciate straightforward. I appreciate honesty. And so if that's how it is and that's just you being you, then I'm cool with it and I appreciate it back. 
and it's kind of made me become more aware of myself and like trying not to just have like filler conversations you know I don't think I am too guilty of that but I'm still American at heart you know and I still like to talk about the weather and I caught myself doing it the other day it was snowing and I was like man it's been snowing all day huh and <laughs> I was just thinking to myself you fucking idiot like what are you do? yeah everyone knows it's snowing everyone's been outside today like what, what can anyone say back to that you're just saying that to fill up some words and so it's it's been good to like like I said to check myself in that way the, the other funny thing out here that I've noticed with the people I've met the Finnish people I met I mean almost everyone asks like the exact same questions and so i don't know where they're getting their american information from but there's like three like specific questions that finnish people will ask like right away and the first has to do with do you take your shoes off when you enter the home or like in US, do people just leave their shoes on when they come indoors? Like I've probably been asked that like three or four times now. Um, because that's just like absurd to the people here that you would leave your shoes on like in the house. Which I get it. I mean, now that I'm in charge of sweeping and cleaning, it makes way more sense to take my shoes off at the door because I don't track dirt in well and my boots and shoes are snowy now so that's another reason and so that's like the first question everyone has asked second is do you like sauna <laughs> because Finnish people fucking love the sauna and a lot of homes have them out here and like people are really stoked on that if you have a sauna in the house and I have to always break Brad news to everybody and say, I'm just not a big sauna guy. I don't really like being uncomfortably warm. I'm, you know, part Irish. So if I just think about the sun, I start to get hot. And so like a room that's just hot is just not what I want to be. But I guess if like I had some, something to contrast it with, like, you know, a cold lake to jump in and then get in the sauna and, you know, that would be kind of nice. And that's what a lot of people do summer homes out here. But for just the sake of being warm, I don't know, not my thing. It's warm enough in the house. I'm like hot right now. That's why I got the little open chest going on. I might even just take the shirt off at some point because, yeah, we're going to. Because it's kind of hot in here. And I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. And I'm just trying to get followers and ratings. And I hear shirtless is how you do it. So. Uh, yeah. Those are the. Those are the observations from good old Finland so far. Hmm. What else? What else has happened? Hmm. Oh, one other thing that I guess is very Finnish that I don't like is these black gummy candies that they have that are called like salmiaki or something. Salmiaki. They are disgusting. I don't know how anybody likes these. They're like salted licorice or something. And I like salted things and I like licorice. But... Uh, I don't like those two things together one bit. And so my coach was hella cool and he got me um, like a little, some groceries for my first day here because I arrived at night. And so it was like, hey, I got you a couple of groceries so you don't have to run to the store first thing in the morning, which was like super thoughtful and super great. And in these groceries were some of these candies. And I am 
a huge gummy candy enthusiast. So I'm like, oh yeah, let's go. So I think I popped those open like the first night or the first morning. And boy, was I unpleasantly surprised to put those in my mouth and start to chew them. And like, you know, you're like, "Mm, yeah, this is going to be, I thought licorice. And I was like, yeah, I can do black licorice. And a couple chews in, I mean, I literally spit it out. So if you ever, if you're finished and you ever come over to my house, you can have all the rest of my candies because those will not get ate up anytime soon. But pretty much everything else finished that I've been trying and having, whether it be candy or drinks or whatever, pretty good pretty doggone good although alcohol here is expensive so i'm back to um not being an alcoholic like i was in czech republic you know basically to give you an idea they have they have cherny kozel here in Quopio at my local supermarket but here it's three euros per can and in czech republic it was like 70 cents per can So that just gives you an idea of where we're at. But the other thing that's dope out here is they have these things called long drinks, which is basically like a gin and tonic kind of gin and juice almost that's in a can, like prepackaged. And they have like, they have like a weak, a normal and a strong one, which is, it's like 2%, 5% or 7%. And then they do it just regular. It's, I think the regular one is with grapefruit juice. And that one's fire. That one's super good. I had a cranberry one the other night. That was super good. I think in the store I've seen lime. I've seen something else. I don't know. I'm going to have to delve into that world because that's pretty good. I'm, I've am i never really talked about this, but if I do order a like a cocktail, we'll call it, I'm normally a gin and tonic kind of guy. So that little long drink is right up my alley and I learned a little fun fact about the long drink and any Finnish people correct me if I'm wrong here but I heard this from a Finnish person so I'm pretty sure it's true the long drink was created during the 1950 something Olympics which were held in Helsinki and They were making drinks, you know, at the bar for a ceremony or whatever, you know. And, like, there were just too many people. So they just were constantly making these things, making these things. And so they were like, you know what we need to do is let's pre-make the drinks for the next day. So that way we can just hand them to people and we don't have to continually make these drinks, you know, while people are waiting. And I guess they put it in a can somehow, some way. And once the Olympics left, everyone was like, yo, what happened to those canned drinks? Let's just keep rocking with those. And so the long drink was was born. I think that's what I'm going with. Hopefully I get a trivia question about that someday in my life. I got to drink this tea before it gets too cold. It's almost there. But yeah, man, that's uh, where we're at out here. It's nice to be out here for multiple reasons, back practicing, back in the gym. Uh, There's been very limited cases in the city that I am in and just in general in Finland. So life is relatively normal. I think the bars have to close at like 10 or so. And normally it's 12, I'm assuming. I don't know what it normally is. I haven't gone out yet, so that's not a huge deal for me. But other than that, you can go in stores. Masks aren't required. They're kind of recommended, but I don't know what percentage I'd say it is right now wearing them. But like nobody gives you an evil eye if you're not. There's no, there's nothing like that. So it it just feels good to be back in society that 
is somewhat normal functioning with some common sense because I, I haven't felt like I've been a part of that in at least a year, you know, whether I was in Czech or whether I was in Spain or whether I was back home in the States, like it's just been a long time since I felt like any of those things were present. So I'm stoked, man. I'm super stoked. What else we got? Oh yeah, I'm officially now uh and I'm excited about this. I'm a taxpayer here in Finland and I've kind of like prided myself on well maybe I shouldn't say this. Eh, I don't know. I don't think the IRS is listening to this, but I've done pretty good at not hooking Uncle Sam up over the last few years. And I pride myself on that because it's not like I'm against taxes. I'm against taxes in the U.S. because I'm just not for paying politicians that are corrupt and don't do anything. And right now it's become apparent that like who we elect as the governor is important. (laughs) Because if you have Gavin Newsom in California, your life is going to suck. Um And so I just have never been big on like wanting to support any of that, you know, especially federally. I don't support that, you know, I don't know what the percentage is now. I'm just going the low end, say 30%, 40% goes towards us having military stationed in 150 plus countries around the world to protect our freedom and democracy, which is just such a fucking hoax. Um, And... Yeah, but here I am paying taxes and I'm excited about it because it goes towards things that help people, you know, like what taxes are designed for. Uh, (laughs) And so, and again, I can't wait for some of my friends that are in the left to start talking about socialism and then bring up Scandinavian countries like Finland and and just to, who have no clue what they're talking about because like yes there are some higher taxes here but they're not any higher than what we pay already in the US like at all like depending if depending on what you make in the US you pay more taxes percentage wise than the top tax bracket in Finland. But the Scandinavian countries, it can work because it's not socialism out here at all. Like it's, it's, and I'm not going to get into that. I don't, I don't know enough yet to like really talk about it, but it's, it's not what everybody wants to make it up to be when they try and preach socialism in the U S right now. America is like a kid riding a bike down a hill towards socialism or authoritative authoritarianism or totalitarianism or communism, whatever you want to call it. They're basically all the same thing. But we're riding that bike down the hill. And if Trump ends up somehow pulling out this miraculous win, which I don't see as possible now, after a couple weeks of this insanity going on. I kind of thought it was going to happen for a while, but now I don't think it's happening. But if he does, then that's like the kid fucking pedaling to the bottom of the hill because we're going to get there really fast just because riots will happen in cities and then the military will have to be called in in order to suppress those things. And so then we'll be in a totalitarian state, at least in the cities, And then there will be constant controversy and conflict over that. Or if good old Sleepy Joe just maintains his victory, which I think is going to happen, that kid's going to just kind of take it easy, like old Joe probably will himself. And we're just going to coast all the way down into that totalitarianism uh, wall or the bottom of the hill, whatever however it works better in your mind is an analogy um and yeah it's crazy you know either way we're headed there and like either way 
that's why the this two party system and picking a sides thing is just so hilarious to me and makes no sense because both evil politicians that are on both sides you know or i should say the evil politicians that are on both sides they both want the same outcome you know the democrats might call it socialism and the republicans might call it totalitarianism it's the same thing it's just how it's wrapped in you know socialism makes it wrapped in shiny plastic paper with a nice little bow on it and totalitarianism is like wrapped in fucking newspaper by a three-year-old yeah it's the same fucking president side president and president (laughs) and then once that happens those two parties then become one and you really see the saying of both wings belong to the same stupid bird becomes very true. And so that's what, like, I just don't get how people can't see that because at this point where we've ingrained ourselves and our identities into picking a side and politics have become like sports. And so, like, I got to root for my team and I got to hope the other team loses. And when reality, it's like, both teams win by you losing and by you cheering so yeah it's 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 insane to me you know got in a nice little twitter uh got in a nice little twitter conversation i guess you could call it although to say we are conversing um, is an overstatement because man it's hard to have a conversation anymore. People don't actually listen to what you're saying. They only listen to what they want to hear. And if you disagree with anything or one thing, and you could even agree with every other point that they make, but you would disagree with one subtlety of it, then you become the enemy and the opponent. And... It's just, I don't know if we're going to be able to recover from it, to be honest. It's, I don't mean to be pessimistic, but that's just how I see it. And this conversation or uh, quote unquote conversation that I had was like just such evidence of it. Um, you know, it, it just cracks me up and I'm throwing a little shade right here, I'll admit, of people who have like never lived outside of their hometown or their home state we'll call it and this this is throwing shade at a lot of people not just one person but those people who have never lived outside of their home state that want to try and talk about worldly issues and like cultural things and this and that like I can't take you seriously Like, I don't know shit about what I'm talking about living in five or six countries and literally almost every part of the U.S. And I still don't know much, and I'll be the first to admit it. But I know that I have a a slightly wider perspective because of those things. But these motherfuckers, man, it's like, listen... If we want to know where the best dive bar is in town, I will come and ask you. But we don't need to know about world politics from Jimmy, who's never left Issaquah. All right? (laughs) I mean, golly. And those are the ones who are the smartest. You know? It's scary. It's like... What's the saying? The, the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. And so the motherfuckers that think they know everything, what's that say they really know? Hmm? I'll let you fill in the blank right there, huh? Take a little, what's this called? Fasu, Fasu Pala. These things are pretty good. I'm, I'm down with these. Hmm. Oh, y'all. But what else? What else we got? 
Oh, yeah. I mean, you can't not talk about it. COVID. I mean, I think we need to thank COVID, though. You know, COVID has been great because COVID has literally eradicated the flu and pneumonia. If you look at the statistics, there was, I think this was last week, there were only 17 confirmed flu cases in the entire country of the United States. I mean, we solved it. The flu shots have worked. We don't have the flu anymore. It's great. I'm excited. You know, I think COVID needs a lot more credit than it's getting. Because the flu has been such an issue for so long with so many deaths attributed to it. And now it doesn't exist. And so, like, props to COVID. You know what I mean? Like, shit. Without COVID, it wouldn't have been possible. So, (laughs) it's completely satirical. What I just said, I hate that I have to explain that, but someone probably thinks I'm serious right now. Although, actually, I think if you're listening still at 45 minutes in, then you understand my humor. But, no, the the COVID, let me see, let me look this up real quick. I had it kind of highlighted on my Twitter. It's where I get all my information from now, you know, Twitter is the best spot in the world. In the 2019-2020 flu season, there were 40 million flu cases reported. In 2020-2021 flu season, there's been less than 1,000 reported. Like I said, it it doesn't exist anymore. COVID needs more credit. You know, I, I just don't think people really understand the magnitude and the seriousness that COVID is. But also the great job that COVID's doing because it's eliminated the flu single-handedly. You know, just the crazy thing to think about with that is there's someone out in the woods somewhere living off the grid who probably doesn't even know what COVID is and they should probably be arrested for endangering the rest of the world. You know, because they don't even know. So they're for sure spreading it. That's just, I think, I'm listening to Tim Dillon too much now. Because the dude is just hilarious. And everything he says is kind of satirical, but also really true at the same time. And so, I think that's where this thing's headed. For myself. So I hope, you know, to the 12 of you who listen... That you're going to continue to like that. Let's see. You know, staying staying kind of on the COVID train. If you didn't notice, which, you know, why, why would you? Because it would, like, take some effort to, like, look something up or, like, think for yourself. Um, but if, if you noticed this week, ah, oh, shit, where is it? The CDC has now, like, reclassified or created a new classification of deaths, which are called PIC deaths. No way. Yeah, they took it down. Hmm. That's ironic that they took this down. I had a... a story or a post shared from Robert F. Kennedy Jr., which was like um, literally screenshots from the CDC website talking about like a new classification of deaths that they have called PIC deaths, and it's for pneumonia, influenza, COVID deaths. And so now they're literally openly admitting that they're grouping all of those deaths together which will allow them to talk about COVID deaths forever. Because as I said, there's no such thing as the flu or pneumonia anymore because all of those sicknesses and deaths now go into the COVID category because they're all kind of in the same family, if you knew that or not. And yeah, I was going to 
read exactly what it said so I could, you know, be factual with it. And it is not on my Instagram anymore. (laughs) So this probably, this YouTube will probably get taken down. You know, it'll take them a little while to get 50 minutes into the, into the podcast, but this thing's probably getting taken down. So I don't know why I even keep talking about it, but that's, uh, that's something to think about. Another little stat for you is there has been more deaths last year, just in totalitary to, total in total than there has been this year in 2020 during the year of one of the biggest pandemics ever. That makes sense, right? For sure. Definitely makes sense. No doubt. 100%. 100%, you know. The other thing, mm, sorry, I'm talking with my mouth full. Last thing on good old vid is I saw on Twitter a family got kicked off their flight, their United flight. Right, you got to include that just because, I mean, it's not surprising if you say United flight and bad service. Kind of those two things go hand in hand. Um, and I don't know the full story. It kind of sounds like there was more to the story than this. But at the same time, it wouldn't surprise me if not because these little like Black Mirror episodes that are happening in real life um, – just become more and more common by the day and this family of with a two-year-old got kicked off their flight because the two-year-old wouldn't wear a mask and so they have you know it starts with a girl the mom crying and saying we missed our flight because our two-year-old wouldn't and i mean it's all bullshit in a way i mean literally everything first of all kind of serves you right for flying with a two-year-old <laughs> because i mean fuck i think we can all agree with that one right if you have a two-year-old where you shouldn't be traveling in general unless it's in a car and so that way you're the only one who has to deal with their shit but in all seriousness you know the, and then it it shows the video of them trying to get the girl to put the mask on and she won't. And at the same time, like, part of me is like, yo, you're the parent. Tell that motherfucker that it need it needs to put the mask on. Or, you know, you get the dad has like one of the neck gator things. Put that over the kid's head for takeoff. I don't know. Like, or put the kid in the luggage like a normal human being and check the luggage. You know? What? Well, what are we doing? There, there's solutions is what I'm saying, you know, and it, it ends up, I think the dad starts like just holding the neck gator on the kid's mouth. And then the United guy comes and says, Oh, sorry, we have to ask you to leave. And it's like just the most bullshit, like customer service. Yeah, I'm really sorry, but I don't have a choice. And we, we gave you a chance. And here the dad is like, are you kidding me? You know, maybe I'll just put it link it right here put it on and it's just like what is this world coming to like the thing about the masks that's so funny on the flights is within 30 minutes after takeoff they're gonna come around with the drink carts handing out pretzels and literally everyone's gonna have the mask just hanging off one ear while they eat and drink their pretzels so what does it matter? And this two-year-old? I mean, what? I don't know. It's like I, I just can't help but laugh anymore. I'm just losing like all my patience with people in general for the most. And it's mainly like people on social media. I, everyone I see and meet in real life for the most part, like I'm a big fan of. But just... Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and just like hearing people's opinions on those platforms 
And maybe I'm included in this. You know, maybe me talking into this mic saying what I'm saying. I'm just further perpetuating this complaint that I'm making or this observation that I'm making right now of people just having no clue what they're saying. You know, it's like because we haven't been allowed to do anything in so long, the old saying used to be people would say one thing and do another. But since we can't do anything and everyone's on lockdown, it's not that anymore. But people still have to contradict themselves. And so it's not people say one thing and do another. It's people say one thing and then say another. And so if you talk to someone long enough who doesn't think for themselves, they'll literally contradict what they say at the beginning of their sentence or the beginning of their paragraph or the beginning of the conversation. If you talk to them long enough, a robot long enough, eventually they'll catch up catch themselves and contradict themselves you know it's like talking to Alexa like I'm sure if you formatted the conversation in the right way and said the right things you could get Alexa to say one thing on the first question and then say something entirely opposite on the seventh question and so I mean the amount of people that just don't want to think And maybe it's they don't, it's not like a conscious thing of like, you know, that's what, yeah. I don't think people are like, I don't want to think, tell me what to do. I I really don't think it's like this conscious idea that's being made by them. It's just that ultimately it boils down to thinking critically requires more effort than just regurgitating what you've been told. And then you combine that with the fact that people want to be a part of a group and don't want to be excluded from something. And now more than ever, if you disagree with one thing, you can be labeled as the enemy or the opposition. And so you put those two things together of thinking being more difficult than not and when you do do it you're met with opposition or and then you're met with becoming an enemy to the tribe you know we've talked about it before that the the tribe evolutionary mentality that exists in our dna like In the past, if you said something stupid or did something stupid and got excluded from the tribe, you died because you needed everybody around you in order to get food and shelter and da-da-da-da-da. And so that's still like in us. So you combine those two things and, and it gets to this point where one, there's very little critical thinking going on, and then two, it's just all groupthink, regurgitation, newspeak. And I don't know what the solution is. I don't know if there is a solution, to be honest, because I think at this point, we're probably too far gone. There's too many robots, and there's too many people that have gone down that rabbit hole. And so I think there's still a lot of people out there that understand that what's happening is fucking madness. Actually, I think a majority of the people would agree that nothing makes sense right now. But the problem is of that majority, only a small minority will actually speak on it. Because as I said, while those people, that far majority can critically think, then they succumb to the second point of not wanting to be excluded from the group. And so that's where I think we're at right now. And I know nobody asked, but I maybe it's interesting to hear someone who hasn't lived in the U S but has also kind of kept tabs. And, you know, I talk with friends and family all over the country 
semi-regularly, you know, and so from whether it be Trump supporters to Biden supporters to people who are apolitical to black to white to Asian to, you know, whatever. So, you know, that's where I think we're at. Okay, that's good. I think we solved most of the world's problems for today. Oh, if if the I'm not a big you guys know I'm not a big uh, watch TV person or like watch Netflix even, but I binge watched something this weekend that I would highly highly recommend over anything else out there. And I don't even know what else is out there. Queen's Gambit, fuck that shit. That's just some... Even though chess is a great game and I like playing chess and play it pretty frequently, that's just like encouraging, you know, the girls like a pill popper and fucking maniac girl. That's just, again, encouraging depression and anxiety behavior, you know? Um but just putting it around a game that no one really fucking understands. <laughs> but if you need to watch something, Ted Lasso on Apple TV is head and shoulders the best show I've watched in a while. Quick summary. It's about, and I'm biased because it fits, it checks all my boxes, but it's about an American football coach who moves to London to coach a soccer team, and he knows absolutely nothing about soccer, but he's good with like getting people to buy into the team and you know getting players to play for one another. And it literally is just such a great show because it it again, I'm biased. It like fully supports all of like the things I see that are negative about the game of soccer. And then it like really highlights all the things I see really positively about the game of football. Um, But then on the flip side, it like, it has some feel good kind of relationship, honesty, self love, self discovery aspects to it. Um, Some of the characters are just great. Uh, No, it's uh, just watch it. Trust me. Trust me on that one. I might have to watch it again. It was so good. So, so fucking good. But, yeah, that's all we got for today. <laughs> Coming at you live from Finland. It's almost one in the morning right now. And, yeah, that's it. As always, thanks for joining. Peace and much love. I'll see you when I see you. Holla. Living for a living, baby. How you doing? <laughs>